Welcome back to the Cutlass Supreme Engine. Uh, I think today, just to seal it up and get it a little more, uh, you know, good to go for when we actually get our other parts that we need uh, to throw it in the Cutlass, uh, we're going to do the rocker arms, the lifters, push rods, rocker arms today, and then we're doing the oil pan. You can't see my hand, but I'm slapping the oil pump. <clears throat> so, that's planned for today. Um, I'm, I'm ready to rock and roll on this. I'm so over this thing not running. Over it. Valves are adjusted. Dope. <clears throat> Doing it one step at a time feels like it takes forever. <clears throat> you know what that means? I'm going to flip the engine and drain all the oil that I poured into the galley uh, onto the floor. I'm really fighting going to a parts store and buying an intake manifold because it's all like the either the air gap or the performer RPM so it's like you know it works I feel so stupid putting these heads on but they're gonna do what they need to do and that's just what is the important takeaway of this made like 300 and those these heads made like 300 and whatever foot pounds 315 on the 85 uh, Corvette. So if it made 315, granted it's not the TPI intake, but with a decent intake and carb, it should make. Dude, if it makes over 300 foot pounds, I'm fine. It'll move the thing around just fine until eventually I blow up the rear end. So that's kind of the plan. Oh snap. Oh snap. Oh yeah. Oh. Guess who's here? Guess who's here? Jake, you gotta help me decide on something. <laughs> so there's some oil in the oil galley, okay? In the in the uh, cutlass engine right now. Right. And uh, if I flip the engine to put the oil pan on, I'm gonna drain a bunch of that oil out. Yeah. It's gonna be gross, it's gonna be a mess. <laughs> right. Do I go buy an intake manifold from a parts store really quick? No. Okay, no. you're probably right. That pushes back the end goal. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably so you're right. You're just worried about the mess, right? Yeah, pretty much. You got a, a pan to put under it? Yeah, I, well, I do, it's currently under the cutlass somewhere. Way under there. Yeah. 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 I, I just, just make the mess and get with it. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. I know. See, the voice of reason. Damn you, Jake. Oil pan next. And a big, big old fucking mess. <laughs> 
Okay, so Jake had a really good idea. We were talking about a bunch of stuff, and he was like, why don't you just put a bag over it so when you flip it, it just falls into a bag? Yeah, I'll just go fuck myself. Pretty fucking smart. <laughs> right, good call. We'll just go with that. That's a good move. So, yeah, we're going to uh, bag it, flip it, and screw it. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, okay, yep. Close enough, let's see it. Ooh, the spin wants to happen fast on this for some reason. Probably because there's... I think the, the block is kind of top of it. So Jake is actually out there cleaning the oil pan out for me. Shout out Jake, dope guy. <clears throat> he helps with my dumb shit when I'm in over my head, if you haven't seen him already. <laughs> okay, let's do it. <laughs> I'll never guess what happened. <clears throat> Literally never. The cork failed. Look at this piece of shit. I'm gonna turn up the ice over here. Just pushed out and said, nah. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> so we're gonna take <laughs> everything off Clean everything and uh, see if we can find a better gasket. Oh well. <laughs> uh. Jake, I'm glad you're here to experience my luck, but also I'm super sorry for you that you're here to experience my luck. It's a real bummer. <laughs> you're so close. I know. That's such as life, right? Sometimes, sometimes you get so close and then you just don't get, you know, to finish. <laughs> uh, yay, I mean, all the bolts are gonna be covered in fucking RTV too. This is great. Building engines is fucking great. It's so good. What a stupid thing, man. You know, cork. That is a pretty gnarly, gnarly, it's pretty gnarly. I mean, it's a pretty aggressive uh, torque spec on that stuff, but it split that cork gasket. Ugh. Dude, if this cutlass runs without a leak, <laughs> I'm actually more worried about that than doing burnouts right now. <laughs> uh, that's like the opposite of satisfying. It it's, came off pretty you fun. know what, it's sad as fuck. <laughs> right. So, damn dude, the end sealed so good. You're not keeping these, are you? Nah, I no, I fucking not. Piece of Spend the extra money on the really nice gasket sets. I thought that's what I did. <laughs> Ended up not being true. Look what I found. You had a flashy one. All you have to do apparently with these is RTV the corners. I'm stoked.
If this gasket doesn't work, I'm gonna be pissed. Especially because it looks stupid. This color blue is just, that nah, just looks stupid. Um, maybe next time I use one of these gaskets, I'll decide to paint something. <laughs> Which I mean, technically, actually, if I put valve covers on this, I could paint this whole thing. All right, so while I drop in these last few uh, bolts and, you know, finish up this little video, I want to give you guys a little rundown on why I love G-Bodies so much. <clears throat> don't leave. Please don't. Just kidding. <laughs> I wouldn't blame you, but it involves chicks. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> so <sighs> my first car I wanted to buy with my own money. I had, I had money saved up. I was looking at all sorts of different stuff, man. I was, my brother was trying to talk me into a Datsun. Um, I, was, <laughs> I was talking myself into a Ford Econoline conversion van so I could just leave, just hit the road and just you know, not worry about anything. I was looking at Chevy Loves. I was definitely looking at Chevy Loves, man. I was looking at everything under the sun. Like if it had four wheels. Actually, I was looking at a dually for a minute too. Bottom line, I was looking at everything. And I was like, man, I just don't, I'm not in love with any of these. I like a bunch of them, but I just, you know, just, could, just can't decide. I've always been a really indecisive person. Couldn't afford a VET. That's what I wanted. I wanted a C3 Corvette for my first car, but prices at the time were not, were not forgiving for a 17-year-old. <laughs> Naturally, I type in lowrider. You can call it a lowrider. I might want it. I slap lowrider into Craigslist. <laughs> Back before Facebook Marketplace. Back when you could actually pay for sexual favors on the internet. I'm not sure if I'll leave that part in or not. Um, I'm looking through stuff. I'm sending my dad stuff. I found like a Subaru Outback that was lifted. I thought it was super cool. And he was like, yeah, I don't know if that's a good idea. It's probably been beaten up. I sent him all sorts of stuff, you know. But my dad being my dad, he wanted me to get something that looked like it was pretty reliable, pretty basic, and you know, just something that would get me from A to B. When I found a two-tone Buick Regal, ruin on top, silver on the bottom, I was like, there ain't no way he'd bite on that. There's no way he would actually take me to drive, to test drive that and buy that. But I sent it to him, and uh, as Faye would have it, he sent it to me. <laughs> he sent the same car to me, the same ad. So, I was like, oh my gosh, no way. He would actually take me to go look at this. So we went, met the guy, Chico Way, and uh, I got to test drive my Buick Regal, my first G-Body driving experience ever. It was like, just hitting bumps and the thing was like, ah, uh, you know? So, my first car that I bought with my own money was a 1983 Buick Regal. And man, do I miss that car. Such is life. Learn from your mistakes. If there's a vehicle that you think maybe you shouldn't sell, you know, like, ah, I feel like I should sell it for this, but I shouldn't sell it for other reasons, you know. I love this car. I'd hate to sell this car. And then you find a reason and you have to. If you have kids, I get that. But I guarantee you down the road, because I've heard it from all the guys at work, I've heard it from all sorts of guys at parts stores and car shows, there's always the car that got away. Mine was a Buick Regal. Cleanest G-Body I've seen in a long time. This thing is a pile compared to that. But you know what? I love it. I loved it. I love this thing just the same. It's going to give me a great feeling. It even does when I sit in it. It's just, it's a different time. By the way, the girl version, the girl part that I was gonna tell you guys about was, uh, I fit seven girls in that car one time. Just going to like a gas station or whatever, but seven girls in a G-body were coming up on this bump and I'm like, uh-oh. 
And they're like, oh my god, why aren't you slowing down? And then we hit it and everybody in the car went, oh. <laughs> Anyways, oil pan is done, lifters are in, valve train is all dialed in. Uh, unfortunately, due to finances, this thing's going to be taking a back seat for a minute because I need uh, intake manifold, carb. Uh, I need to switch my alternator to vacuum advance, I need a water pump, I need valve covers, I need headers to actually get the thing to start, you know. So, <clears throat> it's going to be a minute for the cutlass engine. I'm going to order the stuff as soon as I can, but it is what it is. You guys know how it is. So, I appreciate your patience already. I do. So, appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, follow me on all sorts of other social medias, whatever. Instagram pretty much is the only one that I really use. Follow me on Instagram. Um, I appreciate you guys once again. And I hope you stick around for some cutlass stuff. Step band, GMC, all sorts of other stuff getting put back together as well. So um, tell your friends. And uh, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video.